Hey, good morning from Nashville, Tennessee, our hometown. Make it yours for a little while here. Streaming all over the world on our Circle streaming platforms at circlecountry.com. And there are links, whatever platform you choose, right there when you get to circlecountry.com. Circle Now is available in your app store. The great thing about it, the app, as Kelly Sutton would tell you, it's on demand for... 24 hours. That's right, a full day to go back and watch something that you say, I just can't get enough, or you miss something and go, doggone it, we're going to find it. It's up there for 24 hours. Yep. Circle now. And our YouTube page is up there forever. Yeah. So oh. if you can't make it today, yeah. come see us the universe, next month. The <laughs> universe is sick about that. Just keeps going and going and going. There are some times that I'm like, wow, do we have to see that again? I so, remember saying that. Kelly Sutton, Charlie Malice, Aaron Cooper, studio director Jeff Roberts. Hello over in Master Control at the Grand Ole Opry House where they're getting ready for the Black Crows full concert mm -hmm. tonight. Did we find out if they're going to use the backdrop? Or I don't know. They they were crazy okay. about using the barn. They loved oh, the yeah. idea of the barn mm -hmm. being at the Opry. You know, they, this is their 40th year. I mean, they had some time off when they, they kind of split up there for a while. But uh, Chris and Rich, the Robinson brothers, oh, wow. the Black Crows leading out. So 40th year in the 50th year. Mm. Yeah, 50th year yeah, of the Opry yeah, House in their yeah. 40th year as a band and, out of Alama. And a decent amount of tickets still left, $42. So oh. if you want to see the Black Crows, you can definitely get in very affordable tonight. Yeah. And, so. uh, don't tempt me. It was a good time. <laughs> I know. And I'm it's their first new music, and I had them as my pick of the week last, mm. last yeah. week in 15 years. Oh, so, man. And they've got a full album out. That's pretty cool. Yes. Affectionately known as the Happiness Bastards. Mm -hmm. You can find it well. wherever, wherever you get your music. Okay. <laughs> All righty. There's that. Nice. Uh, they figured if Willie could say it in the highway, man, they could name their album that. They can get so, away with it. Yeah. All right. Well, coming up, entertainment headlines. This is pretty cool. Army Reserve soldier Craig Morgan performing opening day at the Chicago White Sox. The funniest thing about this story is I found it on the Army's website, and the way they refer to Craig is hysterical. So it is written about a soldier. Just remember that. I'll tell you more about that coming up. Uh, also, top video of the year at the CMT Awards. We are down to the final six they've announced, and you can vote on them. So all of that coming up in Entertainment Headline. This is Coffee Country and Cody. Our guest is Stella Prince, who just recently sold out the Bluebird. And I don't want to put too much pressure on you early, but I'm going to quote from American Highways magazine that says the first thing you'll notice is her uncanny vocals sending chills down your spine from that very instant you'll be hooked. No pressure, Stella. All right. No pressure at all. No pressure at Tin Pan okay. South as the youngest youngest performer and host in Tin Pan South yeah. Nashville history. Is yeah, that right? That's true. Well, look at you. You're so modest. Thank you. <laughs> but she is at Tin Pan South and uh, playing the Critter Bar tomorrow night. Yeah. Uh, that's uh, at the graduate mm -hmm. Critter Bar. Cross-eyed Critter. It is yeah. It is like the old animatronics. I want to yeah. say it's from Showbiz Pizza. You were, If you remember, there was Showbiz Pizza yeah. and then there was Chuck E. Cheese. Huh? They were oh, kind of course, rivals. Yeah. Um I think that that's where they got these old animatronics. It's kind of great, though. So if you've ever been, I think they're probably going to take them out. Probably. I, unless they're singing backup for you. I wish they would. It would I mean, be really cool. Well, it would make if, we were, if we were at Chuck E. Cheese, we could play Whack-A-Mole while That'd you were singing. I would love that. I mean, <laughs> that would be so fun. But Well, give us the Stella Prince story from Woodstock, New York. I am, Which yeah. we associate, everybody in this business on the countryside associates with Levon Helm. Yeah. Oh, my gosh. Actually, I mean, I saw him when I was three years old. It's like one of my first concerts ever. And, um, was it the Ramble? Is that what yeah, they called it? Yeah, yeah. it was. Yep, in the huge barn in Woodstock, and um, I mean, it was just kind of the place where every musician in the world is, you know. So starting from the age of two or three, everyone was just there and around, and so you would see them at the grocery store and at the movie theater, at the restaurant, just everywhere. Like, uh, some, drop some names. Who yeah, would you? I mean, there was Peter Yarrow, who oh. like performed at my school for like assembly <laughs> and just like. <laughs> this is Peter Paul and Mary yeah, people for like, those of yeah, you who don't know Peter that. Yeah, Peter Yarrow, Peter Paul, yeah, and he just like was like, so let's have like five kids come up, and I was like, me, me, and so he invited me and like a few kids up and just like sang with Puff us. Puff the like, magic. Yeah, that's what we sang. Yeah, I knew it. Exactly. I knew it. Yeah, and it was just like that was like a normal like school day. It was like it was ridiculous. Yeah, so there's just so much music everywhere all the time. When when did you decide that that was going to be your path? When I was three. 
Oh, good. Okay, yeah. so we waited for we, a couple years. We I have the CD. Contemplated. Yeah, a picture of you on your CD. Yeah, I don't know if Jeff can yeah. come in on this or not. But how old are you in this picture? I must have been about six or so. Okay. And I was very professional. I was like ready to go when I was about four. I came to my parents. I was like, I'm ready for a manager. Oh, like literally, I was like, I don't even know how I knew what a manager was, but I was ready to go, and <laughs> I wanted to start my career then. You know so, what I need, mom, dad. Yeah, I was like a manager. All right. Right. I'm ready. She's trying to sign her emancipation yeah. right there. She's like, um, I'm going to have to go out yeah, and do this music I've thing. I've been ready for 15 years. I've been waiting. That's great. And yeah. What is it about the Woodstock area that draws so much folk talent oh to that Oh, my area? gosh. I mean, starting with the Woodstock Festival. I mean, well, it's just yeah. so historic, you know. And there's so many tourists that come to see that, you know. And, I mean, it's just really, it's a tourist destination for a good reason. Yeah, you know, and it's a beautiful just, part of the world, it's too. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. Yeah, it's a really special place. Yeah. Yeah. How big a population, Woodstock? It's it's pretty small. It's I not a city so. at yeah. all. It's very rural. More of a village? Um, yeah, absolutely. What I mean, think I of lived, in New England? I lived in an old farmhouse on seven acres my whole life, um, my mm -hmm. whole childhood, and it was very country. So, yeah, not city at all. Well, comparisons for you to Joan Baez, Joni Mitchell, Judy Collins, mm -hmm. all the great <laughs> folkies, yeah. women particularly yes, yeah. in that category, yeah. in, that, in that genre. What drew you to that music rather than maybe yeah. what your friends were listening to? Well, my two favorite genres are, you know, I love listening to folk just because of being in Woodstock. And my parents always listened to that. And mm -hmm. starting from a very early age, I was obsessed with their record collection and would just listen for hours and hours all were, day. Were they old hippies? No, actually, no. <laughs> they, were, they were like they were like groovy, like '90s kind of city folk that Good like word, moved up groovy. to the country. Yeah, yeah, I feel like is the right word. Gotcha. And um, artist parents. My mom's a painter, and my dad's a creative writer. Okay. And so they're very creative. And um, yeah, but they love folk music. And so there was always you know Joni Mitchell playing, and and there was lots of old country as well, like Patsy Cline, who is one of my all time favorites. Um, but then there was also like the 70s pop music. And so that all kind of merged together. And that's kind of what I just love to listen to. So it's all kind of blended into one sound. Mm. And uh, you'll be doing just acoustic stuff or will you have yes, a band with yeah, you? Yeah, no, Pants? it's just okay. me and my guitar. Right. Yeah. Tin Pan South tomorrow night, Critter Bar at The Graduate. Our friend Erin Enderlin's going to be on with you oh, as yeah, well. She's been, there. she sat in that seat many times through the She's years. Incredible. We love her. Yep. Yeah, I've never yeah. actually performed with her before. And I was yeah. just like, I, she has to do this. Like, I yeah. really want her to play. And she was totally down. And um, yeah, I'm just really excited to, to have her perform tomorrow. People can follow you at StellaPrinceMusic.com, yes, yeah. and I have your, your EP here, Dear Future Me, which is interesting based on the yeah. story you just yeah. told us, and that six-year-old who's that on the six cover. six-year-old, yeah. It's pretty bizarre to be here now. It's like, I feel like I'm like half 50 years old and half 10 years old. I can't explain it, but I'm like, <laughs> I feel like, yeah, it's weird. Well, it makes you 30. That's yeah, okay. I yeah, I 30. <laughs> 30 is a good age, I'd say. And are you in Nashville full-time, or are you I still am, in Woodstock? Yeah, no, I'm here full-time. And, and how, how long have you been here? I've been here a little over a year, and um, my family moved down here with me. And, um, yeah, I've just it's such an incredible place to be. It's really just life-changing to be here. So landscape, food, our accents, <laughs> what, what, yeah. what are some of the things yeah. you noticed in moving from Woodstock, New York? Mm. to the Athens of the South, Nashville, Tennessee. Yeah, I mean, I'd say people are friendlier, that's for sure. Okay. You know, and, and just, yeah, definitely friendlier, but it's definitely a, a whole different world um, in a good way, in a good way. It's it's a real change from New York. Um, but it's something that I have wanted to do for years and years. And when I was like 12, I was like, I want to move to Nashville now, and I'm so ready. And then I started coming here, just kind of back and forth. And, Were you um, familiar with Cracker Barrel and Waffle House? I wasn't up until that point, okay. but I got myself so then familiar you know, very So then you don't quickly. know about grits? I didn't prior to coming to Nashville, but now I'm very... <laughs> Your face I'm says very it all. Well. <laughs> I know. I actually like grits a lot. And, um, yeah, okay. I, the first time I ever went to Nashville, I had grits. Oh. Really what does our friend James Gregory say about the Waffle House story? No one wants them. They this just is, give them to you. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, you so, don't order them. I didn't order the he grits. Order he them. heard a lady say, I didn't yeah. order the grits. And the waitress said, nobody does. Just eat them. <laughs> like just them out. They just come with it's it. It's part of it. So you know what threw me still? So I'm from Providence originally. So oh, really? so what threw me, it was not the grits. It was the yeah. white gravy. I had never seen oh. white gravy in my life. Like on a I biscuit. I never tasted Oh, it's that. just 
awful looking the first time you see it. It looks wrong. It's like <laughs> something has happened to this. <laughs> uh, like I've never seen this kind of gravy. Yeah. yeah. But, mm-hmm. and so my mother, beware for that, okay? okay. So. My That's mother coming. referred to it as thickening gravy. Oh, it's I didn't thick. think it was okay. white gravy. Yeah. Thickening gravy. Because mm-hmm. yeah. wow. you can like put wallpaper up with it. Yeah. Wow. Well, yes. It's basically <laughs> flour. <laughs> it's something yeah. I need yeah. grease and all the drippings of yeah. the flour that you add oh, in. Wow. So, yeah. And then if, if you have... So it's healthy. Country yeah. ham. Sure. Yeah. yeah. If you have country sure. ham, then you save that grease and make red <laughs> eye gravy uh, with it. Oh. So your gravy is not white anymore. It's red? It's red. Can I just have brown? The color it's supposed to be? I'm Stella's like, I'm out. I'm going back. Yes. Our comedian friend James Gregory said it best about life in the South. He said, I was a, I was a grown man before I realized that gravy was not a beverage. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's terrible. That's fair, actually. He grew up in I Georgia. Try. I'm going to. Try. I'm going to. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, and, uh, again, this is a chance for people to get to know you better and see you live, 10 Pan South, tomorrow night, Critter Bar at The Graduate. We'll talk more about that sold-out yeah. Bluebird show, too. I want to mm-hmm. find out what that was like. And uh, Two-Faced, give us yes. a backstory on this song. Yeah. We're going to feature it all oh over the gosh. world. So this is a song that um, is very special to me. It's pretty much one of my favorite songs I've ever written. It was released this past August, and um, it's the first song I ever recorded with Steve Fischel, who is um, one of Emmy Lou Harris's um, original band members and is an incredible steel guitarist. Today's her birthday, by the way. And today, I was mm-hmm. about to shout that out. <laughs> <laughs> and you beat me to it. <laughs> today is her birthday, yeah. And um, Steve is, is one of my biggest mentors, and um, it's pretty much been the highlight of this year. Was getting How did the two of you meet? Him. I met him actually at an event, um, like two weeks after I moved to Nashville, and I walked up to him. Stuck up, shook out my hand. I was like, hi, I'm Stella. And he was like, give me your elevator pitch now. And I was like, okay. So I just like told him all about myself and he seemed to be impressed. And um, yeah, ever since then, we've just been working together and he's just such an incredible talent and he's like the nicest guy ever. And he's just been so unbelievably supportive. Coffee, Country, and Cody is on WSM. And so is our friend Stella Prince, who is playing Tin Pan South tomorrow night. Cross-eyed Critter Bar at the Graduate, and tell them about your special guests as uh, the youngest ever yeah. performer and host. Yeah. You got some girlfriends joining you, Erin Enderlin, we mentioned earlier, but you have a couple of others that are notable. Yeah, <clears throat> it's going to be an all-female lineup, which is um, something that I just love doing. It's just so special to kind of have an all-women um, just kind of group together. It's um, going to be me, Erin Enderlin, and Denisha, who is making her Opry debut in June. And um, she's a CMT Next Woman of Country as well this year. And Jasmine Harris, who is flying um, to Nashville just for this. She is Joan Baez's granddaughter. And, is and how kind did of, the two of you get to know each other? I literally As a just, Woodstock connection again? No, I reached out to her randomly. That's like how I find most of my connections. It's just like, I'm just going to email them and see if they respond. And, I love um, it. Yeah, that's the only way. <laughs> Worst they can do is say no. Exactly. Yeah. And so she was like, yeah, sure. I'm totally down. So. Uh, by the way, 6,287 <laughs> people reside in Woodstock as of oh. the latest census. Wow. That's great. So. That's Okay. That's it's a good kind of, size. Yeah. Is that more than you thought? It's actually less than I thought. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, but, you know, right. okay. Well, once you left, I mean, it just went all well, downhill. Yeah. I mean, really? like, Nothing yeah. here to see anymore. Yeah. 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 You were telling me that you wrote your first song when you were nine was, years yeah. old yeah. and that there's a fun story. Okay. There is. It, I mean, it's not like fun. It's actually pretty sad. Okay. <laughs> we take that, you. It's pretty sad. No, country music's um, built on that. We find fun and sadness on yeah. this show. Yeah, I mean, you yeah. can't. Yeah. I mean, why not? You know, it's yeah. the old sad songs make me happy thing. <laughs> That's it. It's oh. the story of this one, exactly. Good morning it's, to Gretchen um, Peters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this song in particular, I was so depressed when I wrote it. That's like how I just decided to write my first song and sit down because it was the day that like we were putting our family dog to sleep. And I was like just so bereft with like depression and sadness. And I, it took that emotion to just sit down at my piano and write out the chords for the first time. And that was the first time that I wrote like the lyrics and the verse and the chorus. I'd always made up little songs my whole life, but yeah. it just, yeah, that emotion emotion just made me write that. What so, was your dog's name? Scout. 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 What was Scout? He was a great Pyrenees. He was huge. Oh. Huge. Beautiful dog. Beautiful, yeah. white. Just great like guard dogs, too. Yeah. Particularly for the yeah. cattle folks out yeah. there. They know that breed. Oh, my, my neighbor had a, a great Pyrenees when I was a kid growing uh, up. And I remember going over at like four years old to yeah. pet him. Yeah. And like fascinated yeah. that my whole hand 
was yes. on top of his head, and then there was still so much more head. I have, to all, <laughs> I have like a million photos of me at like three, and him is like he's like four times. It's like a horse. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. yeah. exactly. There's a reason their first name is Great. Yes, that's yeah. true. Yes, yes. <laughs> There's Stella Prince live all over the. Way. I want you to do another one before we go here, but we want to promote tomorrow night Kelly Sutton. At uh, uh, you're familiar with Cross-eyed Critters Watering Hole? Yeah, you're just gonna look for all the animatronics. They'll lead you right in. That's <laughs> <laughs> at the Graduate, Ten Pan South, and the youngest host and performer in the history of our Ten Pan mm-hmm. South music celebration. Thirty-two years has been going on. Has it been that yeah. long? Wow, Isn't that crazy. And again, your special guests are Denisha, Aaron Enderlin, and Jasmine Harris. Right. <laughs> and what was it like to play the Bluebird? Oh my gosh. I mean, it's something that I dreamed of for so long. Yeah. To finally just be there. And it was a sold out show. And it was just like a whole community of people surrounding you. And it was in the round. It was just one of the most incredible moments of my life. It was really special. <laughs> <laughs> You're special, girl. <laughs> Stella you. Prince. And where do you go? You sing with your eyes wide open for the most part. Where do they go? Where do they go? What's what, what are you seeing like, yeah. as you sing? Oh, um, like here and yeah, <laughs> just sitting here in the studio. Oh, I know because you know most artists, it's for the most part, play with their eyes Close closed their eyes, or squinted yeah. or, but you just I, wide eyes. I eyed. love like looking around and kind of taking it all in. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it's funny. I was actually trained classically um, for on piano. You reference piano, piano first, piano, guitar, and voice um, since I was around seven years old. And they always tell you not to look at anyone, but to like look around the room and you know pick a spot on the wall and never make eye contact. And that has been like ingrained in me. So I'm just like trying to you know avert my eyes and not look at anyone. So that's really where it comes from. Well, you got a tour coming up here in just a few weeks. The end of the month, you kick things off in Winter Park, Florida, then you're off to Asheville, North Carolina, yeah. Decatur, Georgia, Bridgeport, yeah. Connecticut, Montgomery, New York. Is that close to Woodstock? It's very close. Okay, yeah. so the home folks will get to come hour. see you. Oh my gosh, it's there's something so special about playing like the hometown Oh, absolutely. But um, yeah, I actually forgot to mention the, the Tin Pan South <laughs> show is actually a, kind of a version of my showcase that I host, which is um, Nashville's only all-female Folk Americana Showcase. And um, it's called Stella Prince and Friends. And it's sponsored by Change the Conversation. Oh, very cool. Which is, um, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, so you had Leslie posted. Leslie Graham and Tracy Gershon. And yeah. they, um, they, they are incredible. And, um, yeah, they sponsor the event. So they're sponsoring this round as well. Okay. Oh, and what time cool. do you go on tomorrow? 9 p.m. 9 p.m. 9 p.m. All right. <laughs> 10 Pan South. Uh, the Cross-Eyed Critter Bar Watering Hole there at the Graduate tomorrow night with our friend Stella. Next time you do a 6 p.m. show, we will all be there. Uh, (laughs) The Opry House tonight. We're going to light that thing up with the Black Crows. First new music in 15 years. 40-year-old band, 50-year-old venue. And they come together tonight for that full show. And then tomorrow night, you will be there hosting. Thursday, I will be there with Larry Wayne Gatlin Mm -hmm. for Opry Country Classics. And we remember... Nora Lee this morning. Nora, every, oh, Dwayne yeah. Allen's wife, Nora Lee Allen, but everybody referred to her as Nora Lee. Nora with an H, by yes. the way. Yeah. And uh, just a dear, sweet friend and, and human being. The world was a better place with her in it, I'm telling you. And, you know, the thing is, I, I mentioned it yesterday on the show, the passing of Nora Lee Allen, and then woke up this morning and realized that they actually suffered two losses in the Oak Ridge Boys mm-hmm. camp. This was uh, news that had come out i didn't realize that it happened both passing on easter sunday nora lee Dwayne allen's wife the wife of 54 years and eight months they were together which is just incredible worked as one of our background singers at the grand Ole opry for over 30 years 40 just was it 40 40 plus years yeah just an incredible human absolutely gorgeous lady and she is going to be laid to rest later today she has a visitation i think at uh, hendersonville is it hendersonville baptist uh, First Baptist. First yeah, Baptist. Yeah. Noon, uh, noon to two, and then service right after, I believe. Yeah, right? at two yeah. o'clock. Exactly. Yeah, the but, big Baptist church. That's yes, that's, that's, that's the one. Henderson. There's the picture that I was talking about that I love. Oh of her. yeah, I did yeah. see that. She yeah. looks yeah. so uh-huh. cool. If you're watching yeah. us on any of our streaming platforms, you can see the picture of her. That had to be in the 70s. That well, I is told you. Peak 70s, right there with the vest and just cute as a button. Maybe the Everly yeah. Brothers had her in mind. Might have. Prettiest girls I've ever seen. Bowling Just green beautiful, right there. Beautiful lady. And, uh, then Stewart's Chapel is, I'm going to say, probably her home church or family okay. church in Kentucky. Yeah. And it's Lewisburg, Kentucky, not Tennessee, Lewisburg, Kentucky. And that is tomorrow. And uh, that uh, visitation starts at one, service at two, burial to follow. 
There and you go. I'm assuming that's probably the family, family plot yeah. there at their old, as we say in the South, home church. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Well, and then this was the other bit of sad news that I didn't realize had happened. But um, Donna Sturban, who is Richard Sturban's wife, her father passed away the same day day Mm. so certainly all of our thoughts and prayers are with the entire oak ridge boys family and camp as they are going through the loss of two members of their family well let's talk a little bit about army reserve soldier (laughs) mr craig morgan this is so cute because i found this I, i do a lot of research at night trying to find different stories for us and i found this one on the army website i just want to read it to you the way that it was written Warrant Officer Craig Morgan Greer, a combat veteran who served in some of the Army's most elite units, sang the national anthem at the Chicago White Sox home opener (laughs) versus the Detroit Tigers at the Guaranteed Rate Field in Chicago on March 28, 2024. They call him Greer throughout the rest of the story. They don't call him Craig Morgan. (laughs) I just thought that was the sweetest thing. Greer, a country music star known for songs like That's What I Love About Sunday, is also White Sox hero of the game. So, pretty cool. He re-enlisted in the Army Reserve last year after a 13-year break in service. Of course, he re-enlisted on stage at the Grand Ole Opry, which I thought was incredible. You sure did. Uh, but yeah, he got to sing the national anthem at the White Sox. But that was the cutest thing to me when I'm reading it. I'm like, oh, they just call him Greer. Warren Officer <laughs> Greer. <laughs> Instead of Craig Morgan. So, Craig, if you're listening this morning... Uh, congratulations on getting to open the White Sox season opener. That's pretty cool. Uh, we do want to tell you more about the year, the finalist, a video of the year for CMT, because now you get to decide who takes home the title of video of the year. CMT Awards going to be happening in Austin, Texas. That's this coming weekend on CBS. You can watch it Sunday night. Now we are down to six of the nominees for video of the year. They are as follows. Ashley McBride for Light On In The Kitchen. You've got Cody Johnson for The Painter. Hardy for Truck Bed. Jelly Roll for Need A Favor. Kelsey Ballerini, if you go down, I'm going down too. And Lainey Wilson for Watermelon Moonshine. They're all going to be a part of the live event happening at the Moody Center in Austin, Texas. That's April the 7th this coming weekend. You can watch it on CBS. Also going to be available on demand on Paramount+. Plus. So the six nominees are determined by fan voting, which continues in the category live until the show. You can find it at vote.cmt.com. So what do you do if you're Kelsey and you win, but you're also hosting? (laughs) Well, that's an only child's dream. I would run out and grab it and be like, look at me. Okay, hold my trophy. And the award goes to me. Don't yeah. hate me because yeah. I'm beautiful she and won't be talented. The one, yeah, she won't be the one announcing yeah. it because they'll have somebody else out there announcing the category. But yeah. Remember sure. one year they had Carly Pierce at the Opry stage doing uh, CMA nominations and she was nominated. Yes. So she got to announce herself, which I thought was pretty cool. That's pretty cool. <laughs> and I am nominated. I, I got that. it. And yes. she's, a, she's an only child. Yeah, well. So, is she? I didn't no, know she has a not. sister. She's no, got a sister. She does have a sister. Yeah. We didn't know she had a sister yeah. for the longest time. Her but, sister's uh, like, uh, hello, <laughs> right here. I also want to let you know we got a lot of great performances that are going to be happening. We just saw Need to Breathe here. Need to Breathe is going to be at CMT Awards as well. Mm-hmm. Trisha Yearwood will be down there, and she is doing a an, an unreleased song that we haven't heard before. And she's also going to be receiving the Humanitarian Award, the very first Humanitarian Award from the CMT Awards. Now available, new episodes of My Opry Debut. Being able to be here to introduce my son, my nephew. Please welcome to the stage on his Opry debut, Walker Walker Montgomery. Montgomery. Country music has been mighty good to my family. And the Grand Ole Opry is part of that. And I'm honored to to play here, and it's just going to be a great night. My name is Walker Montgomery. Thank you so much tonight. God bless country music. (laughs) <laughs> old school god bless country music <laughs> he's a good one walker montgomery always enjoy having him in my opry debut with walker also with tweeny who came to see us on her way to the opry Love tweeny. Yeah, i did too the uh the shindellas sean cassidy <laughs> who where was the concert he mentions in my opry debut and you'll find it on the opry's youtube channel that he walked off stage at this huge concert and that was it yeah. just walked away and went into some other Started writing television shows. That's it. He's been writing script and directing writer. TV Hollywood shows script writer. for yep. and a he long said he time. Didn't miss it at all. Just, no. That was it. 
that was huge a hit phase shows. in my life, and I'm all in, all done. Yeah. Good and for him. then back on stage at the Grand Ole Opry. Why? Because Gina Keltner called him out of retirement. That's right. Because she still got a crush after all these years. <laughs> a lot of ladies did. That was a big night. <laughs> but uh, my Opry debut, Opry's YouTube channel. So uh, what are you working on for later in the hour? Well, Blake Shelton did all for the hall in Oklahoma as he rounded out his tour stop. We're going to tell you how much money they raised for the Country Music Hall of Fame and Museum. Also, Emmy Russell... Loretta Lynn's granddaughter on American Idol. We'll give you an update. I was watching last night, so good news for her coming up. Go out. girl. This is Coffee Country and Cody. So if you pull up Dash's name, uh, as we take a look at her Jimmy Kimmel performance here. We talked about I packed the car in your car and James smoke. I sang a song, you cue the songs and we get going. But you So as you watch yourself there, you were looking like with a laser glare. Was, my eyes were squinting and I was like. <laughs> you were critiquing, weren't you? I was, yes. Yes. I do that a lot. What did you like and what did you not like about that performance, the segment that you saw? That performance was so much fun. I right. can't tell you. It was my uh, live t television debut and it was just, the whole team at Kimmel was so amazing, so kind and it was cool getting to do it a couple times, you know, rehearsals and then. And getting you ready for us. Right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. That was exactly. Country yeah. and Cody. Exa exactly. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and then did you stay up and watch yourself that night? Yeah, I did. That's my, the great part. Yeah, right? we had yeah. this hotel room and all my friends came over and it didn't hit me until I was watching myself back and I was like, oh my gosh, that's me. <laughs> I was like, whoa. So that's how'd so you get fun. the invite to do do that? Um, Avery, my publicist. Yeah. She's an icon. <laughs> I mean, it was such a cool story about me being an independent artist and having all the success on TikTok and been working I, I released my first song when I was 13 so I've been working on this for a very very long time and finally with the help of TikTok I finally got my moment and my music got to be heard and it was just a really cool like the underdog win story mm -hmm. um and a lot of people loved it including the Kimmel team and so how old are you now 24 and weren't you playing coffee houses like at 10 or something in yeah. San Luis Obispo mm -hmm. California coffee shops wineries all that stuff my dad was like my first manager so he would like book me all these shows yeah it was That's really awesome. cute <laughs> yeah so what was it like the first time that you hit upload on TikTok were you nervous were you just like ah, I'm just gonna put it out there and see what happens yeah it was during the pandemic when everyone was just kind of posting whatever and I was like, well, I might as well. Like, I got kicked off of Belmont's campus, you know? Like, my car was back here. My laptop was back here in Nashville. And I was back home in California. And I was like, what else am I going to do? I'm like, I might as well just post some stuff on TikTok. And by kicked off, you meant because of the pandemic, the pandemic. not because no, of no. anything else. No, like, wait, wait, let's uh, dive into that. <laughs> Other people have been kicked off of right. Belmont's campus. Oh, yes. So, yeah. Oh, yes. Right. They just sent everybody no. home. I was a, I was a good yeah, kid. Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah, I thought um, so. Pandemic, <laughs> yes. Pandemic. So yeah. you came here to go to school then mm -hmm. if you were at Belmont yeah what, was it the music business reputation at Belmont it was a songwriting program actually my ah. older brother went to Belmont for a couple of years before he dropped out and then I decided to do the same thing I was in the songwriting program I was the only place I applied actually um got in early acceptance and I was when, I, when everyone in my senior class was freaking out about where they're gonna go to school I was like I'm going to Belmont I already know we're good <laughs> and it was it was great I loved that songwriting program so much I learned so much it was cool getting to see like my natural instincts and talents put in a very analytical way yeah so explaining like the top 40 and why that songwriting works and it was very very interesting so why does it yeah. work there's so many techniques. I could nerd out on it forever. I actually want to start a podcast about songwriting. Oh, you, I'm should. So, you should. Oh, I love nerding out about songwriting. It's so fun. <laughs> That's like my thing. Yeah. You, uh, <laughs> uh, according to your ex post that I saw, formerly Twitter, you are ranked within the top 200 artists in the world now. What is happening? Do you know how big? <laughs> <laughs> know how big the world is? I know. It's a big world. Huh? Yeah, I don't I mean, even you know. Look what's at all the planets. On. Let's go back to yeah. science. There's the planets, and there's Earth, and that's us, and that's the and world. That's us, and that's me up there. And you're yeah. in the top 200. Yeah. It's when insane. does it feel real to you? Because it's one thing to say this, and you post stuff, and you get like billions of streams, mm -hmm. and that's a number. But when does it feel like, oh, this is real? There are real eyeballs, real people listening to this. I think for me, it's when people say hi to me in public. 
um, that mm-hmm. always feels really good. And just I randomly lo- that you randomly. obviously don't know. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. It's always so fun to interact with people. And I always try to ask them like, oh, how'd you find me? Like, what song made you find me? Just because I'm always so interested about what, what got them hooked, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, there are 7.9 billion people in the world. Oh so gosh. in theory, about one every one of every three people has seen you. <laughs> In- <laughs> this week, this week, I don't know if you know these numbers or not. Aaron Cooper, our I studio do. director, yeah. looked this up. This yeah. week, views on TikTok, this is just TikTok, 3.17 billion with a B. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, I just want to laugh about it. Because yeah. I'm like, what? You don't understand, six weeks ago, like seven weeks ago, I think it was, I had 100,000 monthly listeners. I have, I think, 12 million today. So what happened? What was the turning point? <laughs> it was the line dance I, I made. Mm-hmm. That yeah. was it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I started posting this line dance I made to my song, Austin. And I posted a few. I work at this horse barn out in Franklin. And I was riding out there one day. And my manager and I had talked about how cool it would be to have a line dance. Because I want people to like be dancing at my shows. Because yeah. it's gone away. It it's was totally a thing. It's gone away. Oh, but it's coming back it, hard. Yeah, and, yeah. Oh, now it is. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I had a taste of like when it wasn't hadn't been brought back and like my line dancing nights are like the best nights of my entire life listen there were line dancing shows on our network the nashville network Mm -hmm. tnn as people knew it back-to-back line dancing shows one was done in knoxville one was done at the wild horse here in nashville i miss it i miss it yeah I wasn't alive then, but like I miss that. You know, I want that culture. <laughs> I wasn't alive then, but it sounded fun. I think I would miss it. So, um, yeah. how did how did you know line dancing? How did you, you had seen it through watching videos? Yeah, or I've, I've yeah. gone out line dancing a bunch of times. San Luis Obispo, where I'm from, is like half surfer, half country, and so. Mm-hmm. Like the Mid State Fair, for example, every year, every summer, we go to Jimmy's Watering Hole with K Jug, and mm-hmm. we go when we line dance, and it's so much fun. We partner dance too. I, I do that a bit, and then I go do Honky Tonk Tuesdays at the American Legion here in Nashville. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> and I grew up dancing too. I did 15 years of ballet, so like I could. It was pretty easy to choreograph a oh, line yeah. dance, you know, because it's kind of just walking. Yeah. And you had our mic stand. Mm-hmm. Oh, the that. WSM mm-hmm. mic stand had to had to represent has been seen mm-hmm. a lot that of many times. billion times. <laughs> How cool is that? And now you're on the real one. And look at us. Now we're here. <laughs> so exciting. <laughs> That's so cool. Thanks for repping us. Of course, That's I awesome. had to. It's Nashville. Well, we feature Austin right now all over the world. Give us a backstory on a song before we play it. Well, it's funny. I've actually never stepped foot in Austin before. Oh, really? And that's the tea. Um, I was really <laughs> upset. <laughs> right? People were like, what? Um, yeah, I got a little creative with this one. Um, I was very upset with this guy, and I had written the entire album about him. And I was like, I'm exhausted. I've written every detail. Like, I've already written the songs. And I was like, how can we Even just, up to like, the point where you kill him? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, okay. No, I haven't done that one yet, but I should. <laughs> Deluxe so album. Alive. Um, no, but I was like, how do we how do we take this further? And I wanted to get kind of creative with my songwriting and there was a bunch of excuses, real talk in the relationship and all that stuff. And I was like, what is like the meanest thing you'd say? Oh, did your boots stop working? You know, it's so condescending and rude. And it's funny, so many people on TikTok do not understand what that line means. I get so many comments of, What does your boots stop working mean? I'm like, did you not go to third grade and learn what a metaphor is? Like, why are you confused? It's so self-explanatory. It's so, it's so curious, but like, whatever. Um, but yeah, we just got creative and I actually freestyled those first two lines. Did your food stop working? Did your chuck break down? And everyone in the session was like, whoa, we're writing that song. Oh, and it just good. flew out in like an hour. So who was cool. in your session, writing session? Uh, Cheyenne, Travis, and Adam Windler. And there, it was honestly a random, random session in L.A. This is WSM's Coffee, Country, and Cody. Dasha is here. We just saw and uh, heard, depending on whether you are streaming on Circle, Circle Now, or listening on WSM Radio, Austin, 62 million Spotify streams viral on TikTok. We were talking about 3.17 billion views this week on TikTok. And she's saying, what is my life right now? (laughs) And uh, still working at the horse barn? Yes, yeah, so we're gonna. Th- I'm going later today, actually. And uh, it says shoveling. Yep. Insert adjective uh, here. Mm-hmm. Sometimes used as an adjective. While your song streams over a million times, that's relatable, and I love you for it. 
<laughs> country yeah. music. That's it. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. It's it's authentic, right? So, <laughs> organic. Organic uh, for sure. Yeah. Take us take us back to the Legion Hall and the video shoot yeah. for Austin, mm-hmm. I- if you would. Um, yeah, you got to give the backstory on so the Super I, Eight shoot. Yeah, so it was my first time working with Dalton Davis and Alex Green. Um, they were kind of the creative directors behind it, and I had this vision of... So I'd been honky-tonk dancing mm-hmm. there, like I said, mm-hmm. at American Legion, and I saw the light-up American flag, and I was like, that is so cool. It's just so dive bar, honky-tonk. I like, <laughs> wanted that like dirty feeling to the video. And I was like, okay, we're going to rent the space out for a few hours, and I want to shoot it on Super 8. Um, and I didn't realize that when we got there, we'd only have room for one take. Because usually, you know, you take a bunch and you sure. cut together the best stuff. So what we had, we actually had, so we had room for one take. And then we had room, I think we had like 30 seconds of extra film. And that's like the really close-up shots you see. And literally he would just go, go okay, stop it. And then and stop it. And it, we were done with the video in five minutes. It was really funny. Okay. And how it's viewed so many times. It's like, oh, that was pretty efficient, right? <laughs> And it's funny because I even, I edited the video together. So that's my edit. That was me on CapCut. I think I did it all. Oh, on. my God. How long yeah. did it take you to edit it? An hour. I mean, it was one take. So I just, like, had to adjust little things and sync the sound and stuff. But it See, was very homegrown there. Now you're ruined for everything going forward because you're going to get signed and they're going to be like, hey, here's this big budget. And you're going to be like, no, don't we don't need, need to do that. Yeah. We don't need to do that. Keep it simple, stupid. That's right. Yeah. That's yeah. right. So, uh, what rooftop are you on? Because it looks like BMI to me uh, when you're in the swimming pool and the kiddie pool. Oh, that one with that your is. your patriotic <laughs> bikini on. That's awesome. That was at the rooftop of my friend Acacia's studio, actually. Oh, okay. And it was like 60 degrees out and oh. it was freezing. <laughs> and the sun was going down. And they're like, girl, you're a trooper. And I was like, girl, hurry up. Like, I am cold. I'm cold. About five minutes or less. Let's oh, my go. God. Um, literally, we're out there probably for an hour <laughs> shooting, but it was worth it. We got some good stuff. So We were talking about life on California's Central Coast. And how spectacular it is growing up in San Luis Obispo. It was a dream. Every time I go back, it's like, wow, I really grew up here, huh? Yeah. Yeah. I mentioned San Simeon (laughs) is one of my favorite places, and I'd always dreamed of getting to visit the Hearst Castle there, and I finally did. Mm -hmm. And the the elephant seals were coming in to have their babies on one side, on the ocean side. So you're going north north Mm -hmm. on the coastal highway. And on the right-hand side, cowboys are working cattle on the Hearst Ranch. (laughs) And I'm like... Where else like, on earth where, is this? Where am I? And the yeah. San Lucia Mountains are right there in the uh-huh. distance, and the castle sits on Enchanted Hill. Mm-hmm. And you tell me your mother was a docent there. Yes. So it was like a field trip. Every time you turned around, you were going to the Hearst Castle. Yeah, I've been there a lot. She was a professor at Cal Poly, the oh, college there. Sure. And so she would take all of her architecture students and, and teach them about the history and stuff, and I'd always tag along. Cal Poly um, Broncos, green and gold. Yep. Oh, yes, sir. Look at you. Yeah. yeah. So, how did the fam feel when you discovered music and you were gigging at ten? Like everybody was for it, or were they like, "Well, it's a phase"? No, I have to give my parents kudos for this. They have never once wavered on that. So, my my older brother and I both showed early interest for music and wanting to be artists, and never once were they like, "Hey, let's maybe be realistic about this for a second. <laughs> they were like, "Be delusional. Like, go oh, chase that." How yeah. about that? Yeah. Were you an yeah. athlete? Because you're tall. You're mm-hmm. above average. Volleyball. In height. Volleyball. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. Captain of the volleyball team. There yeah. you go. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's fun. I miss it so much. I should play in a rec league. We won uh, the rec championship last night. <laughs> <laughs> what does is, what is one get? What does the team get for winning? T-shirt. T-shirt. That's good. That's good. That's all you they were getting mad at us because we had this one guy on our team who was a really good hitter, and they were like, hey, listen, guys, this is an open rec league. Like, <laughs> Cool it. And we're like, <laughs> please don't break someone's okay. face. <laughs> no, what she got one girl hit got hit in the face. Oh, See? smacked. No. Oh. But I'm like, we're good. Sorry. Yeah. Like, what oh. do you want me to do? Not be good at volleyball? Like, no. It's like you know? the City of Hope celebrity <laughs> softball game. Somebody always got I'm one so in the face. I'm so competitive too. Like, <laughs> I go play my best. That <laughs> opening line about. What is it? Uh, hot day in Texas. Yeah. I ate my breakfast. Ate and... my tears for breakfast and drove out. Yeah, I that love is, visual storytelling. That is like, that's an opening line from Guy Clark or Radney Foster, mm-hmm. Joe Ely. Thanks. One of those. It's Texas one of those lines games. that also just kind of came to me. I've n- it really. I, yeah, it just kind of happened. Ate my weird. tears for breakfast. Yeah. So good. And a lift. Yeah. Congrats <laughs> on signing with Warner, by the way. Thank you. Yes. Thanks. I love the Warner team so much. 
An embargoed concert announcement is now unembargoed. Oh. Alabama Woo. Country Music Hall of Famers with Gary Allen and Dusty Slay, Bridgestone Arena, Friday, July 19th. Friday, July 19th, Bridgestone for Alabama, Gary Allen, Dusty Slay on sale this Friday morning at 10 a.m. This okay. Friday, 10 a.m. Tomorrow at 7 p.m., yes. you'll be at the Grand Ole Opry. Henry Cho, Jig Jam, going to be there. Aaron <laughs> Kinsey will be there. Dylan Marlowe, Mason Ramsey is making his return to the Grand Ole Opry stage. Daryl Worley and Rhonda Vincent. Uh, George Burge, coming off a number one record, is coming to see us. Had a big hit with Mind on You. And my pick of the week features the wonder women of country, Kelly Willis, Woo! Melissa Carper, and Brennan Lee. Yay! See you tomorrow.